dad attempted to edit his films a number of times, uh, but no computers, so everything was done with a pair of scissors and, and a, a splicing machine. As a result, he had pieces of scenes all over the place. I've had to bring them together electronically. I didn't have 100% success in doing it, but I got most of them. little boys that really the only difference is the price of our toys we go from macho suits like guns running shoes pickup trucks hunting ducks and power to power to power to power to it is plug them in the wall the farm that i grew up on was about 180 acres uh, about half of it in woods, the other half a uh, farm for potatoes and so forth. Dad uh, cut lumber in the winter and took it to the sawmill and used that for uh, enlarging the potato house and so forth. For a decline in virility Now I've thought about that Wait, there may be some validity In what those people say But in my case is just the only way I get to go outside and play hut, hut. Boy, I love this stuff Power to Power to Power to Power to Oh, just plug them in the wall As you can see, I really wasn't afraid of the camera. You'll notice that there's no particular order of these clips. At one point I attempted to put them together chronologically and then I looked at the possibility of putting them together based upon subject and decided it was a fruitless effort and that I would just leave them more or less random. Barking up the wrong tree. That's what she said to me. Well, I pleaded and the bag nearly out of my mind. The stupid baby, baby, baby girls are hard to find. She said, Cause it's sorry, daddy. Uh, signs made uh, with the intent of, of getting all of the. There are several different seasons blended in these shots. However, this looks like the year that the Kentuckians that we had for pickers. Uh, bailed out on us in the middle of the year and after the after they left uh, our neighbors came over with their equipment and crews and, and helped finish up.
In this clip, uh, Lindley Chase, who was one of Dad's hired men, uh, is doing the plowing. Well, when I was a kid, I'd take a trip every summer down to Mississippi to visit my granny and her auntie Bellum World. I'd run barefooted all day long, climbing trees free as a song. And one day, I happened to catch myself a squirrel. Well, I stuffed him down in an old shoebox and punched a couple holes in the top. Roy McManus stepped on the tractor for a few minutes here. I was sitting way back in the very last pew, showing him to my good buddy Hugh when that squirrel got loose and went totally berserk. Well, what happened next is hard to tell. Some thought it was heaven, others thought it was hell. But the fact that something was among us was plain to see. As the choir sang, I surrender all, the squirrel run up Harv Newman's coveralls. And Harv leaped to his feet and said, something's got a hold on. I believe this is where uh, my grandfather, Ernest Hammond, introduced us to Bert Shaw as a hired hand. Bert came to us after Lindley left. Uh, we have grandfather, my grandfather uh, digging a ditch for the septic tank. This is my grandfather and his wife Beatrice uh, down at his home in Blaine. And this was a birthday. Don't know for sure the year, but that's a 1946 Ford uh, of my dad's behind, uh, behind my grandfather. Dad tended to keep his cars only about two years, so that would be either 46, 47, possibly 48. My dad kept his camera in the car virtually all the time, and when he happened upon something interesting, he uh, was able to take pictures of it. This is a neighboring farm. Uh, 
with a potato house fire. We used to marvel, when we watched it, we would marvel the fact that the owner who will come up walking up the road here uh, is so calm about losing his potato house. This is a Jimmy Olenberg. Jimmy uh, ran the local variety store in, in town that uh, I spent a lot of time at his store. During the winter months, my dad would package up the potatoes and load them on a rail car for shipment to Boston or whatever the market might be. Here the potato inspector takes samples of the potatoes, determines whether or not it meets a U.S. number one grade. This load did. The man coming out of the car here is Harold Hammond, my father's brother. My first five years of school was at the little corner school at the corner of Hersham Road and US 1. Um, took the camera to school one day and uh, took these photographs. Uh, recognized some of the people as Daryl Point, but the most significant one is Jerry Fulbelling here. A little guy waving his hand, wanting to be a part of the crowd, and today he's a major farmer in the town of Easton. This was the uh, teacher. Uh, she taught all eight grades. Can't remember her name, but as I recall, she married a toll. And in a moment, you'll see the back. That's the that's toll, as I recall. I was known to be a bit of a clown at times. My mother, Marion, in about 1946 or 1947, followed by my sister Ethel, and she's followed by my, my dad. Obviously, I'm behind the camera, and that's evident by the fact that the camera's kind of moving around a little bit more than it should. When we traveled from uh, our home at Easton to my mother's folks over in uh, Canada, Centerville and so forth, there were two ways across the river, the St. John River. One was via uh, a bridge, but it took us quite a bit of our way. And the other was this ferry. On one trip to Canada, we uh, stopped along the river, St. John, I believe, uh, for sandwiches. Uh, that's uh, Gladys Good, mom's sister, his, uh, her husband Roy Good, their children, uh, myself. And this again is Roy and Ethel and Gladys, dad, at our farm during a visit. My dad's sister was also Gladys, and uh, we're at uh, Gladys and Roy, her husband, McManus's camp on Unity Lake in Maine. 
This is her son Wade McManus. Most of Dad's films survived the years quite well, however some of the films turned very red and when that happened I had to convert them to black and white in order to, to get anything out of them at all. In the foreground is Mom and Barb. Dad on the left, Ethel waving in the background. Barb, Gladys, Roy, and Harry in the foreground. Gladys. Ethel, Gladys, and Mom. Wade and me in the water. I fell uh, in the water at, the, at Unity Lake and gashed my leg on a sharp rock and I still have the scar. Pictures of my dad are so rare because he generally was behind the camera. Here was a very short clip that I was able to salvage from the movies. This is a ferry across the St. John River, similar to the one from the earlier clip. However, this one was not powered where the other one was. This one used the current of the stream to move it across the river. And me at the wheel. Awakes a bright new morning, we can loaf along. Blue skies up above, everyone's in love. Up a lazy river, how happy you can be. Up a lazy river with me. This is a family that lived uh, on the Hersham Road near the farm. Uh, they moved to Canada and we were over for a visit.
Mom and Dad took the occasional trip, not very often. This was one that they took, and it is near Perry's Nut House uh, in uh, southern Maine. Listen to the whippoorwill late in the day. The country is minding your business, help on his grain. One of my dad's brothers, Alton, uh, lives in New Hampshire and has a farm there. This, his wife is Clara. The two children are Albert and Burley. Knowing your people, knowing your kind. Country is what you make it. Country is all in your mind. When we played this uh, film at home on the farm, we used to get a kick out of looking at Alton and Clara on the bench. Alton would shuffle to one side and Clara would shuffle away. Played that clip over and over again. Thanking your own thoughts, loving your town. Country is teaching your children. Find out what's right. This is a Drexel seed cutter. It was an extremely dangerous machine. A set of knives uh, came down on the top of the cups and the operators had to position the potatoes on the cup depending upon whether it should be cut once, twice, or three times. If you got a little behind and tend to reach a little too far forward, you get your hand underneath there and the knife would come down on top of it. The people in this clip are Willard uh, Tompkins, uh, Bert Shaw, and Fenton Shaw. Fenton was a, a neighbor, and at that time he was renting the farm across the road from the house, and that was before my dad bought it. Here the trucks are loaded with the seed and fertilizer. Uh, they're at my uncle Harold Hammond's farm up on the hill from our place, uh, getting ready to go to the field. This is a uh, potato planter. It's a uh, Iron Age potato planter. It has an interesting story to it. Uh, this is the planter we used for a number of years on the farm. Ultimately, when I uh, got a job in engineering and went to work for the Lockwood Corporation, uh, Lockwood had acquired the Oliver line, the Iron Age line, and we were producing this very same planter that I worked on as a kid. When the planter got to the end of the row and needed to be refilled, they really hustled uh, for the minimum turnaround time. Here we have Harold Hammond that's now dumping the barrel in, uh, Willard Tompkins uh, putting fertilizer in, and Bert Shaw uh, driving the planter. I'd like to point out something to my sister Ethel. Notice the brand on the barrel, a single H.
Willard Tonkins uh, picking up the uh, spilled seed and opening sacks and getting them ready for the next load. Dad had these uh, signs made uh, with the intent of, of getting all of the farming operations organized in film. The sign indicates that it was uh, May 25, 1947, but this black and white clip was sometime well in advance of that. That's me driving the tractor. It's uh, Lindley Chase picking the rocks, putting them in the cart, and Harvey Tompkins uh, helping him. And then Dad turned the camera over to me and he drove. Eventually rock picking was mechanized, and here is a mechanical rock picker. This is one that my dad made. Uh, he made several and sold them. He'd buy an old truck, junked truck, use the transmission and the rear, the rear end and the wheels and the tires and the frame to make rock pickers. He bought very, very little steel to actually do it. When we uh, did haying, we handled it loose. Of course, at that time, virtually everybody did. Later, it was mechanized and, and bailed. I recall that this scene was taken on a 4th of July, and that's me driving the tractor. People marvel over the fact that he trusted me enough to lay in the row and have me drive right up on top of him that way. Dad made his own sprayer. He used uh, wood to make the tank, uh, clamped it together with tie rods, chinked it up with cloth. Each year I'd have to get inside that sprayer and 
re-chink the cracks as, uh, as the wood has shrunk. Back then, very little was known about the hazards of the various chemicals used uh, in uh, spraying potatoes. And this spraying operation, there would be DDT, copper sulfite, and several other very hazardous kinds of, of chemicals. No protection was used, no face masks, nothing. Whenever he had a spare moment, he was always clearing new land, pushing the woods back to get more farmland. In this scene, we have Junior Hagerman running behind, uh, tossing the wood aside, the, the stumps aside. From time to time the tractor would get stuck and we'd chain a timber to the wheel and work our way out that way. Each year we'd get a chance to go to the Presque Isle Field Day put on by the University of Maine's Agricultural Department. And in one of these scenes you'll see me driving a, a cub, farm old cub tractor plowing with it. That's me there. Stock hit a run, had a local reputation, but the cold that wasn't enough. To be the fastest horse in a one horse town, he leaves them all in the dust. For a variety of reasons, over time the potatoes grew longer and longer and they didn't die a natural death so that they could be harvested, but they had to be killed. And in this period of time, there was all kinds of experimentation. In this case, they tried burning them, they used chemicals, and you will see later, they even, they beat the tops off, which became the more common means of doing it. We beat it to Daytona was laughed and said, looks like they've turned a pack and you loose among these thoroughbreds. Folks said this old mule's been places, most blue bloods fear to trip. But a thousand left turns later, foot still on the gas. The leader watched a car slip by. And this particular field day was shortly after the end of World War II. Helicopters were uh, very much of a novelty. This is a demonstration of a helicopter being used for spraying or dusting potatoes. Dad purchased the neighboring farm, a Hirschman farm, just to the west of, of a home farm. And he moved the house uh, up to our farmstead, remodeled it, and used it as a hired man's house.
The forest around the farm was used for more than lumber. It actually was used for wood for heating. And in this scene there is Bert Shaw and Willard Tompkins and the guy with the red hat is Junior Hagerman again. Junior was a common visitor to the farm and he always pitched in whenever he came by. In clearing new land, not everything could be done with the farm tractor and a, and a, and a stump plow. Occasionally Dad had to arrange to have a bulldozer come in to move some of the bigger stumps. This is one example of it. There's a place called Trucker's Paradise Just south of San Perdue And the drivers all stop in there For a laugh and a cup or two There's a woman waiting tables And I'll tell you, boy, she's nice The clip coming up is blowing a, a large rock uh, out of the ground with dynamite. Over the years, Many times as this clip was edited by my dad with his scissors, we lost the actual explosion, but you can see the smoke uh, from the aftermath of the explosion. Just to be with the fallen angel of Trucker's Paradise. Mom. No need to ask her what her name is. She won't Harvey Tompkins. But she's better off and me on the fender. This was Willard's favorite pose, Harvey Tompkins and me. Then a big producer from Hollywood led her astray. It turned out that he was married and her heart turned cold as ice. And that's why they call her the fallen angel of Trucker's Paradise. As I recall, Dad and I were somewhere down near Bangor and he saw a baler for the first time and so we stopped and took pictures of a hay baler. They were quite a novelty in Maine uh, back then. The tractor, by the way, is an old farm all regular. She used to be Miss Washington, almost Miss USA. Then a big producer from Hollywood led her astray. It turned out he was married And her heart turned cold as ice And that's why they call her The fallen angel of Trucker's Paradise And that's why they call her The fallen angel of Trucker's Paradise By contrast, here's a team of oxen again being used uh, for haying I don't know exactly where this was, nor do I know the time, but in this scene it looks like I'm probably 10 or 11 years old, so that I would put it about 1945 or 1946. As I mentioned earlier, the methods of killing the potatoes so that they would mature for harvest varied and that the industry basically settled on beating the tops off. This is my dad's uh, first attempt at making a roto beater. I made it out of uh, available material and the sheet metal over the top of the flails was just a light aluminum. It wasn't long before he found out that the aluminum wasn't strong enough and there was a plume of dirt and rocks flying in the air. Uh, from the ruptured sheet. More new land clearing. Situation. 
sometime after about 1955 or so, he doubled the size of the potato house and brought in a bulldozer. Operators, uh, the operator is Roy Trombley, uh, to bank up the dirt against the side of the of the potato house. A grain carbine. This was not on our farm. Great contrast between this self-propelled combine and the combines available these days. Fenton Shaw. Note the spelling. It's Dad's handwriting, but he must not have been the greatest speller in the world. I doubt that this date on this sign is accurate for the clips. Clips could be from any number of years. The crew we're looking at here is a crew of Kentuckians that were brought in by the Department of Agriculture for the because there was a shortage of labor that year. Unfortunately, they really weren't very used to hard work nor the cold that we have up there and as a result before we finished harvesting they all bailed out and went home it created a real bad problem I got up on some wine with a waitress Sonny had a girlfriend and just couldn't wait JB hooked up around midnight this uh, clip here is a different crew and a different year I recognize the man bending over picking potatoes in the blue shirt. don't remember his name. I do remember that he could pick a hundred barrels a day. At that time I think we were paying like 20 cents a barrel. We parted through college, acquired some knowledge, never did get a degree. We did it our way, looking back on the good days, there's still not a Good job with the FPL. Sonny's got a good life, a baby and a good wife, and every day he carries a mail. Davy is a cross country trucker. And he called last night from South Carolina. He said, I've fallen in love with a waitress that I met at a Waffle House. This is me driving that 1937 Ford truck. Uh, that's my sister Ethel climbing up on the running board. In a moment she'll get up around the front, ride on the fender, and I'll try to get her attention with a notebook, which is a tally of potatoes picked by each picker. We drank a few cold ones and told a few old ones and sang another verse to the song. Yeah, we were the boys who made a lot of noise And we sang all our songs for free We parted through college Acquired some knowledge Never did get a degree We did it our way Looking back on the good days There's still not a lot I regret I believe this is Lawrence Toll, one of our neighbors with friends I'll never forget All those nights I can't remember Friends I'll never forget In about 1960, I bought my future wife, Sandra, home for a couple of weeks on the farm. That's her driving the truck. And that's me running the barrel hoist, loading the potatoes on the truck. This is a one-row potato harvester that my dad made. If it, 
if it could be seen, there's a device on the rear corner of that conveyor that was instrumental in my getting involved in the engineering of fire machinery. Down to the office for his nine to five. He drives a 94 two tone economy car. Loves to tell the local Inside the potato house. He's the critic. Yeah, I can hook you up. I know everybody. My mother's family, the Krauss family, had a large family get together at the abandoned farm where she grew up with her father. I can't be sure of the year, but judging from the cars, it looks like it's about 1946 or 47. This is Will Jensen, acting like he's drunk. Uh, Will was the husband of my grandfa grandmother. He did a five-star column on a band you never heard. He did a bluegrass review without an unkind word. He thought it was time to ask his boss for a raise. His boss said, I can't even tell if anybody's even reading your page. Yeah. Ina Purrington, mom's sister in the foreground. He caught a young hot star headed into town and then he hid behind his typewriter and gunned the boy down. Here come the My mother, followed by Mildred Krauss, her sister-in-law, and their daughter Nancy. After taxes, he's a happy critic. <laughs> yeah, he's rolling in the dough. Nancy and Frederick Krauss. I can do this forever. This is easy. They're all reading my column. Mum's sister Ruby on the left, and then the lady with the glasses reaching across the table is my grandmother. Let's get funky with this. Basil Krause filling his plate. Come on, Sam. There's old Biff jumping in. Glenn's laying it down. Oh, my man Steve. Man, my fingers are getting tired, y'all. That's Will Jensen there with the bear cub. Wearing me out. There's old Shannon. I have no idea who the baby is, but that's the uh, porch on the farm. They're gonna love you. Cause they already love me. Yeah, it's a critic. This is on our front lawn of the farm, and I believe that's Catherine, the, the oldest one, and Verna, and Nancy. In the background would be uh, Ethel. And again, we have Verna, we have Nancy and Catherine and Verna seated there on the lawn. Like Ralph Hagerman and Lois Hersey's wedding. And Junior Hageman on the left. Let me hold your hand. Try to understand. I want a girl like you to tell my troubles to. In about 1947 or 1948, my mom and dad had a large Hammond reunion on the farm. My dad arranged to have all of the guests uh, move over to the machine shed and come out in a column as you see here. From east to west, I love you the best. Let the four winds blow, let them blow, blow, blow. From east to west, I love you the best.
Like the way you walk, like the way you talk. Let me hold your hand, try to understand. I want a girl like you to tell my troubles to. Don't be afraid. You heard what I said. Let the four winds blow. Let them blow. Let them blow. From east to west. I love you the best. Let the four winds blow. The gentleman in the white shirt and the hat is my grandfather Ernest. Most of the other people I don't recognize. That's my. That's me in the white T-shirt to the left. My mother. My mother right here to the on the left. And Avis Hammond. Harold Hammond with the hat in the background. And his wife, Eleanor, to his right. I'm not the kind of use a bitch or a rule. I'm handy with the love and I'm no fool. I fix broken hearts, I know I really can. And Aunt Lee, Leala, Hegerman that is. In the middle there. Need repair. I'm the man to see. I whisper sweet things. You tell all your friends. They'll come right into me. Here is the main thing I want. I'm at a loss as to who most of these people are. I fix broken hearts. I know I really can. Your broken hearts need repair. I'm the man to see. I whisper sweet things. You tell all your friends. They'll come running to me. Here is the main thing I want to say. I'm busy 24 hours a day. I fix broken hearts. I know I really can. As it was common, you'd see Dad running down to the camera to get control of it. Mom, Dad, uh, Leala, and Charlie took a trip down to New Hampshire, and this is some shots of the uh, Cog Railroad.
Breakfast black coffee, one slice of dry toast, no butter, no jelly. Leala and two of her grandkids. Just some lettuce, two celery stalks, no booze, no potatoes, no ham. Lawn ornaments were a fad back then. This place was selling them, as I recall. But my mom made a number of these lawn ornaments, used a hacksaw blade there for the neck. A trip to the state capitol in Augusta. I have no idea who these people were. Chocolate ice cream and I'm starving to death when I wake. Supper two pieces of cauliflower. Lee Wheeler, the man on to the right of that uh, string of fish, had a cabin in uh, Canada, don't know exactly where, and I recall going over there to visit him. And that's Lee there. He was a farmer nearby. My sister Ethel to the left. I think he was the one to catch the fish. I don't think it was Ethel. Don't know who this man is. You're fixing the kids all spring mashed potatoes, but it's bullion water for me. Hey, you got a lock on the refrigerator. Lord knows where you're hiding the key. While I'm starving for food late at night, I'm starving for loving from you. But you say that when I can see my own wife, you'll be glad to look at it too. So pass me a carrot stick, fill me a prune, a glass of skim milk, and that's all. The Barnum and Bailey Circus came to town, and this is at the fairgrounds in Presque Isle. From judging from my age, it looks to be about 1944, 45, summers along in there. Well, the boy tried and he suffered and died, but don't he look good when he's thin? Oh my, he's died and died and died and died and sure is a rough way to die. That's me with the pony. What's wrong with me? I meet you like a man on a fuzzy tree. My friends say I'm acting wild as a bug. I'm in love. I'm all shook up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my hands are shaking and my knees are weak.